Hip-hop since 1987.com. What do you say to this past weekend? It was the Made in America concert. Who? The Made in America concert. Yeah. Given by Jay Z, and Beyonce was the headliner the first day. So we saw so many young women, you know, going down there to see Beyonce and the rest of the um, the young women who performers. And these are artists, female artists that they look up to. So we've seen you speak of the rappers, but. How do you, what is the specific role as the female artist? The Beyonce's, yeah. the Rihanna's, Nicki Minaj was in the city. Yeah. And for those in my age bracket, you know, the, the youth, how, what is, what is our, what is our specific role and what is their specific role as female Thank artists? You. Yeah, you know, the woman is everything in the way of building civilization. Elijah Muhammad said, where there are no decent women, there are no decent men, for the woman is the mother of civilization. When you have a woman that is ignorant, she doesn't know, but yet she's the first teacher of her child. She's the first nurse of her child. Before the child learns to say God, they say mama. And mama is the agent of God in the rearing of the children. The question is, what does she know? Who is teaching her? Look at Ariana, look at Nicki Minaj, look at Beyonce. These are some of the most beautiful, well-formed women you could find. Well, in the way of the enemy, and I'm not talking about Jay-Z, I'm talking about the people that set styles. When I was in show business and on television, you could not film me as a Calypso artist from here up, but never from here down. If I made a suggestive move, that was not filmed. Today, you strip the woman of her clothes. What does a, what the, how can a man think straight looking at the beauty of Beyonce? I mean, come on. So what do she, you say to those who? Manage them, help us to be more sane. A man is, is made into a dog by a way a woman presents herself to a man. There ain't no preacher out there that that's holy, that a woman can disrobe herself and the man still think Bible, still think Quran. Hell no, he's thinking woman. And how do you rule a man? You rule him by the beauty of your body and the suggestion of sex. And sex is the joy of a man with a woman. So when you strip a woman down, a man becomes a dog. You don't make him a man. You make him to treat you like an object of sex rather than the creative genius that you are. Ain't no man great without a woman. So how do you change that? You have to educate the managers. Jay-Z is a good man. Jay-Z is a, a Jay-Z is a good manager. But now, your woman is on display. Do you want men looking at your woman, being tempted by your woman, to make advances at your woman? Who wouldn't want to be with Rihanna? Who wouldn't want to be with Nicki Minaj? These are talented women, but you strip them. Then their bodies become the tool that is being used to promote the degradation of the woman and the subjugation of a man. All of this has to change. Why wouldn't a young woman want to be like Beyonce or like Rihanna or like uh, Nicki Minaj or like others? 
They want fame. They want to be looked at. They want to be admired. They want to be loved. But look how beautiful you look. I'm sitting across from you. You are well covered. Only thing I can see is the beauty of your face. But I know the beauty of your face is a sign of the beauty of your mind. Why should I be tempted by the beauty of your body? I'm not your husband. I'm not your lover. I'm your brother. I'm your father. I'm your uncle. But today, men, very few women today that grow up in America find themselves abused by fathers, by uncles, by grandfathers, by brothers, by cousins. There's hardly a woman that can say I have not been abused by somebody that I trusted. We don't understand the love that a woman has for a man that's her father, a man that's her uncle. That's the first precious one that she's learning from. She's admiring. And the admiration of the female toward the male, if he doesn't understand it, he wants to take advantage of it. And you ruin a woman. So many of our women today, they're cold and hard, man. They ain't got no love for a man because they've been misused by one of the men that was great in their lives. This is real. So I would want to say to my brother Jay-Z, as much as I love and admire him, man, I, I want to see my sister beautifully covered. And when Rihanna was in the Middle East, and she had to, oh, she was magnificently beautiful. We don't even realize that uncovering yourself is beauty, but it's the beauty in, of the beauty of your form. See, God gave you a form like that because there's never been a problem of men uh, uh, procreating since the beginning of time. You are that. But to cover you, and then to demonstrate who you are here. This is who the woman is. There ain't no man great without a woman. There's no, there's no man doing something that a woman can't do, and in some cases do it better. Man is Hakim. That's the attribute of God. That means wise. She's Hakima. That means God has made her to be a possessor of wisdom. Don't degenerate your woman and make her nothing but an object of sex. She's more than that. So I would encourage Jay-Z, and I hope you take it in the spirit that I give it out of love for you and honor for your greatness and honor for the love and beauty and greatness of your wife. I would love to see our women clothed demonstrating their gift of their talent. The gift of their form should be seen by those who are worthy. I mean, an unworthy dog looking at something that beautiful that he wants to paw at but can never have. Do you know what that does to a man where he can see you and can't have you? Then he'd go home and attack a child. I'm sorry, this is a question that you raised yes, for me, my sister, but you gave me a chance to talk to my brother because he's responsible. I'm responsible for my children. <clears throat> I have a beautiful wife, beautiful, and she had a beautiful form. She would win these little um, beauty contests when we were young together, and she was so fine, you know, but after I heard Elijah Muhammad, you know, I, I, I had to dress my wife, but I, I, I wanted to cover stuff, you know, because I don't, I don't want to kill nobody, but I don't want you looking at my wife like you can have her. And sometimes when you uncover your woman and you go to a bar where there's low-minded people and the man sees her and she's finer than, well, you know what fine is, and the man say, hey, baby, Hey, just a minute, a brother. That's my wife. I don't give a damn. Hey, baby, you sure is fine. Now a fight comes. I reach for my gun, and all of a sudden, another man is dead over some BS. We got to stop it. 
we got to stop using our woman like that. I refuse. I mean, um, Bill, um, the entrepreneur that is, is the rap mogul. Russell. Russell is a dear friend of mine. When I stayed in his apartment, his penthouse, during a time when Gaddafi came to the UN, I stayed in his apartment and he had all these beautiful pictures on the wall and some of them were with his beautiful wife Kimora at that time. And at the same time that I was in his home, Kimora was on a billboard naked. I refuse to look on her. I love her, I admire her, but I'm not going to go and look at the beauty of your form. They said, well, man, Farrakhan, you're a nut, you're crazy. Yeah, you're right. I respected her too much to do that. And there was a beautiful picture of her on the wall, pregnant. And that's the most beautiful time in any woman's life to me, when she's bringing new life onto the earth, but I refuse to feed on that in my mind. Why? I love him, I love Kimora. I don't want to feed on the beauty of your wife and then sit in your presence and I'm looking at your wife. You turn your back and I'm dropping a little hint, you know. See, men are like that. You give them a chance to view the beauty of your woman and you're not careful when she, when he's gone, this man who's fed on her beauty now wants to experience it. Mm -hmm. And that's why Jesus said, this wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. I thank you, sister, for just asking me that question that allowed me to say things that I've never said before on television and I don't hardly speak like this. Even in the mosque, I will speak similar. But you opened that door, and I thank you. Now, you've been touring from city to city. While you were in Detroit, you had the privilege and you know that you sat down with Eminem, a white artist who is very talented, but at the same time has brought to the light, like I said, the exploitation of our culture and the infiltration of white people in hip hop. What was it like sitting down with Eminem? And what are your thoughts on the, that concept of how they've infiltrated the hip hop culture? You have to realize, my dear brothers and sisters, that we are the original. The original man, the original woman. Which means that we don't call ourselves mankind. We are the original man and those that came from us are mankind, a kind of the original. So who was it that brought spirituals to America? Was it not we who were on slave plantations singing swing low, sweet chariot, steal away, steal away, to Zion or to Jesus, we started that. Then as we uh, were sharecroppers, songs came from us, blues came from us. And when we sang the blues, it came from a heart and a soul and a mind that had a relationship that got broken. My baby done left me. How did she leave you? What, what happened? And that's your blues. Now white folks say, I want to sing blues. He may not have a blues life, but we had a blues life. He come, he's singing blues. Well, since that's a novelty for white folk to sing the blues, he just put you out of a job. We're the jazz man. We're the Charlie Parker, the Thelonious Monk, the Miles Davis, Coltrane. But white folk study us, and then they play jazz too. And they're good at it, because they're good imitators of the real. But when they imitate the real, the real are out of a work, and the imitator gets it. Eminem didn't have rap until he had us. 
But he also grew up like white trash in Detroit. He feels some of that pain that we felt. So that pain inspires him. Now he's a, a rapping genius. How did I feel talking to him? I feel the same way talking to him like I talked to Kanye. Kanye is a giant. Puffy is a giant. All these that I've talked to that are black, they are the originators of the art form. They are originators of the dance form. They are originators of the dress that came out of hip hop. White folks take it now and sell it back to us. Eminem is powerful. Yes. Now, how do you use a powerful black man or white man who's a lyricist? I said, look, um, brother, The same way you can call a woman a bee and a prostitute and talk about I'm going to bust a cap in you because that's the lifestyle that we live, you can turn around and teach that person through the rap and the beauty of the rhythms. And they're grooving to the rhythm like they did with Public Enemy, but they're getting a message. When N.W.A. was putting out those hot lyrics, there was a beat and there was a, a lyric. But white folk, when they heard the lyric, they say this is dangerous for him to say F the police. So we got to stop this. When Ice-T said, you know, kill the pig. That's dangerous to them. Move him out make him something else because we can't have him talking like that. Michael Jackson, he's the entertainment love of my life because to me, Michael was such a spiritual giant. When I had the privilege of sitting with my brother, first before I sat with him, Johnny Cochran, his lawyer, told me, he said, Michael is very depressed. Would you talk to him? Because at that time they were accusing him of being a pedophile and all of that. So I said, sure. He got Michael on the phone and I told Michael, I said, Mike, pain is the mother of creativity. It's out of our pain that all these musical genres came. Our pain is real. White folks have pain too. But their pain is not as deep as the pain of the originator of the form. But it's, it's novel when a, a Korean can jump up and get on TV and, and do the dance of hip hop and, 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 and rap. And we say, dang, look at that. But he's telling you how great you are because now he's taking it and making a fortune. Imagine a Chinese dude being a rap artist, and they got him. They got Japanese rap artists, they got Korean rap artists, they got Africans that ain't never thought of no rap. They rapping now, everybody rapping. You the king of the world. Now you gotta turn the rap. White folks said these niggas, excuse the expression, if we can make them talk about drugs and guns and that, we can fill the jails that we're building. So the more you had a beef and I had a beef, and I put my beef in my song, you put your beef in your song, then when my posse meets your posse, we had each other. Then we start arguing, fighting, killing each other, we end up in the jail. But who's, whose jail is it? Their jail. And nobody builds a hotel and you don't expect people to rent those rooms. Well, we ain't renting. They're bringing us there for years on some BS. Anytime we are caught with, with some little, what do you call it, when you just have a little bit of reefer, 
Uh, a, a roach. A roach, that's it. I, I've been away from it so long. <laughs> I forgot the language. But they, they find a roach on you, man, and they want to bring you to jail. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they put a little more on the roach. They put some reefer there, bring you down. Uh, it's a felony. You're in jail for five years. I got free labor now. This is a new form of slavery. The 13th Amendment only gives you citizenship as long as you don't commit a crime. And if you commit a crime, they have a right now to strip you of what they didn't give you in the first place, citizenship. So now, getting back to Michael, I said, Mike, take your pain and use it to create. And you'll come up with something great. After that, he came up with history. They don't really care about us. Mm -hmm. See, you can Jew me, do me, like me, kike me. Stop right there. Now, you can call a black woman a bitch. You can call her a whore. But I'll be doggone if you can get in there and talk about a kike, which is a slang term for a Jew. They made him pull all of that off the shelf and take that out because the Jews are careful about how you talk about them. That's why I'm in trouble today, because I tell the truth on what they do and what they've done and how they make use of our ignorance. Now we're in prison, Motorola hires us, teaches us how to build things in prison. Now they got slave prison labor. When you come out as a felon, Motorola ain't hiring you. IBM is not hiring you. The companies that you work for in prison are not hiring you because now they got to pay you a living wage when in prison they had you for nothing. So they circle you back around so you go right back in the hole that they made for you and now you're doing five years, 10 years, 15 years, and they're getting free labor. This is the system that we're in. Some of us look good with millions of dollars. Some of us can wear the best clothes and drive the best cars, wear the most fantastic bling bling. But in the end, we let bling bling make us think that we're doing the right thing because we're rich now. So I'm saying to all the brothers, the young brothers and sisters that are listening to your brother, right now in the hood, beautiful young girls. My God, mothers, if you take your daughter to the store to buy her something to wear, the design is so freakish. Her little behind, well-shaped, is all out in the public. Half her gut is out, the, the top and you know, her flesh. If she bend over too far, Lord have mercy. What you see is what you see. So she's out there, and Mama sees her, she sees Beyonce, and she's trying to do the moves, you know. She's two, she's three. And mama's saying, shake it, baby. Come on, show me how you can shake it, baby. Shake that booty, baby. See, we are in our ignorance, taking what the enemy has done and making it fashionable. It's gotta turn around. And that's why I'm here, that's why I thank God that at 82 years of age, I have so much energy to keep going until the message is in the heart of our young. Then I can go. Mm -hmm. Then when death comes to me, I can lay down in peace, knowing that the generation who's gonna answer the prayer of our ancestors got the message, they're up, they're united, they're warriors, and they're not going to take no stuff. We free at last. Hip Hop's is 1987.com.
season, you were in a very, very interesting but privileged position. You got to play with four out of, this, let's say, the top 10 NBA players in the world. Right. Kyrie, LeBron, Westbrook, and KD. Mm -hmm. What's it like? What was it like playing with all four of them in one season? Like, what are some things you pick up? Break it down for us. I mean, you no, know, especially with LeBron, I mean, just coming in there, see how he work every day. You know, the first one in the gym, uh, how he take care of his body. I was, that's why I was actually being around. You know, you know, we go out to eat, things like that. 